welcome to our review on enzymes. So first thing we actually need to know then is what enzymes actually are. And the key phrase to remember here is that they are what's called a biological catalyst. So what that phrase actually means is that they're going to speed up a chemical reaction, but they're not going to be used up themselves. So basically a very small amount of enzyme is capable of catalyzing or speeding up a large a number of chemical reactions. Enzymes have something called an active site. Now this is the most important part of the enzyme as far as we're concerned. So the active site then has a very specific shape. And what happens is that that shape of the active site fits perfectly with the substrate or the chemical that it's going to have the reaction with. So what we then find is that when the substrate molecule fits into the active site, then it brings together those chemicals that are required and then they can form a bond to make a bigger molecule. Even though lower down the school you've only ever learnt that enzymes break large molecules into smaller ones, they are also capable of building bigger molecules. So just bear in mind that enzymes will either break large molecules into smaller ones or build large molecules from smaller ones. So it can do the two things. What we can see in these two diagrams then are the two types of reaction that enzymes are involved in. So the first one, as we said, is where they can build up larger molecules. So you can see in the first diagram there, we've got two smaller molecules that fit into the active site. The enzyme then holds them close together so they can form a bond before they release them afterwards. In addition, the second image there we can see is the breakdown reaction. So a large molecule comes in and fits the active site and then the bond is broken to release two smaller chemicals. One thing we need to bear in mind though is that only one particular type of substrate can actually fit that active site. Because the shapes are so specific then that means only one substrate is going to fit it. So what we can then say is that the enzyme is specific for that substrate. So this leads us on to one of the common questions they like to ask you about why we couldn't use enzyme X for two different reactions. And the answer you need to give there is that the active site is specific for one particular substrate. Enzymes have what's called optimums. So what we actually find then is when we're looking at temperature and pH, each enzyme has a particular temperature and a particular pH that suits it perfectly. And at that point, it's going to be working at its fastest rate. And that's what's called its optimum. We need to understand the reasons behind the changes in the enzyme's activity with different temperatures then. So again, this could very well be the six mark question on the B3 section because there's plenty we can say in terms of scientific detail here. Now, if we look at the graph on the left, we can see the very typical shape of an enzyme temperature graph. So along the bottom, we've got the temperature increasing, and then on the side, we've got the enzyme activity. So what we can see, first of all, in that first section of the graph, are those low temperatures, then the enzymes aren't very active. Now, the reason for that is that at low temperatures, there's less energy being provided to them. And if particles have lower amounts of energy, then they move slowly. If things move slowly, they're less likely to collide with each other. So the less frequent the collisions, the slower the rate of reaction will be. As we then increase the temperature, what we're doing is we're giving the enzyme particles more energy. Okay. Now, if things have more energy, they move faster, and that means they collide more often. So as a result of the more frequent collisions between the enzyme and the substrate, then we have a faster rate of reaction. And that then continues right the way up until we hit that optimum temperature when it's working at its fastest rate. If we continue to heat it up past the optimum, what we then see is quite a dramatic drop off in the activity of the enzyme. And the reason for that is that we're actually denaturing the enzyme. And what we mean by denaturing is that we're breaking bonds within the protein structure of the enzyme, which means the active site has changed shape. If the active site changes shape, then the substrate no longer fits it, so the enzyme no longer works. 
Now, this increase in the temperature and its effect on the rate can actually be summarized with what's called the Q10. So Q10, quite simply, equals the rate at the higher temperature divided by the rate at the lower temperature. So just bear that in mind. It's very unlikely to come up, but it's always good to know just in case it's a one mark question. Just like with temperature, we can have a similar graph with pH. If you look at the picture at the bottom there, you can see that the shape is a perfect bell-shaped graph. Now, the optimum pH will vary depending on which enzyme we're looking at. So one that's designed to work in the stomach would have a pH of around 2.2 because that's the pH inside our stomach, whereas one that's designed to work elsewhere in the body would have a different pH that suits that particular environment. Now, what we find is if that pH varies too much from the optimum for that particular enzyme, then the enzyme is denatured. So that's why no matter if you go too high or too low with the pH, you get that quite rapid drop off of its activity. And again, because it's denatured, we're just saying that the active site has been changed in shape. So the substrate will no longer fit it.